welcome back guys to another episode of uh, Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. <clears throat> We're trying to get through the Grand Archives now. We've just opened up our first uh, shortcut, which is nice. And uh, we'll see how much stuff I can get, you know. I might miss a lot of stuff. So now, as expected, we get the Scholar Ring, the final pillar of Lothric. A ring engraved with a portrait of a scholar. In Lothric, the scholar has long been considered one of the three pillars of the king's rule and is therefore master of the Grand Archives. Let's try this. Nothing here. Okay. And we're going to grab, there's a, uh... it's a titanite slab here that we opened up with that, uh, with that switch up there. So let's go find it. I don't know where it is actually. Doesn't seem like it's here. I thought it was uh... that you could see it from here. It's in here. Hmm. I don't know where it is. might be up front here. Yeah, here's where it went down. I remember that you could see it from there. That's the key. Alright. So, I'm just gonna run back down. <clears throat> Oops. Uh, I can't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go around and take the shortcut, I guess. Down, <laughs> and then up. Also, I can go get the Avalon right there. But... I'll skip the Avalon in this playthrough, too. <laughs> I skipped it in uh, Dark Souls 1, you know, because you had to dive at it. So, I'll do the right thing and skip it here. I guess I'll send this back down. Okay. Now, let's actually get on. Oh, I was gonna do something else before we started. Yeah, I'll 
come back to this later. Oops. I don't need all these titanite skills. Um, once I open up the shortcut there, that'll be easier to deal with that room in that area, so... Okay. There is kind of a tough area up here that I really don't want to do. Um, but hopefully it won't be that bad. There's these Corbians that you can drop down on, and they can give you quite an issue. I guess we could not drop like right on them, but hoping that I could get a couple of them with one hit, but eh, we got it anyway. Um, is there anything down there? We'll check in a second. Hollow gem. I think this might be the first time we've gotten the hollow gem. No. Yeah. Londor. Um... And here's where we can drop back down there. <clears throat> but, instead, we're going to go and I guess we go out this way. That's right after the dragon's oops, dragon slayer armor fight. I wonder why you can leave here. Is there any benefit to coming out here? Here's our good friend, Grey Rat's Ashes. Humble Ash of Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement. Grey Rat was a thief who fancied himself a martyr for the poor, which is what drove him to climb the wall. It's a nice little backstory, I mean, for him that he was either a little bit more intelligent or whatever, you know, he had a wherewithal to uh, play the Robin Hood, I guess. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Oh! Just gotten enough of my uh, of my health down that uh, that fall was uh, was lethal. Um, but we can go easily quickly get our souls without any trouble.
I thought that the uh, the shortcut I opened there was up on the top level. That would have been easier to run past. Okay. All right. Now we'll still have to run by this area because I'm not gonna do this until I get the shortcut and I can get my head dunked in wax. It's gonna make this area a lot better. Thankfully that's not that hard to skip. I'm also gonna skip the uh, gargoyles here. I can defeat them pretty easily and it's not that big of a deal. Actually, oh well. Can you just skip them here? Can you just skip this whole next area by going here? Um, Oh, he can come here. Okay. Is there something I'm missing about this section? I mean, I guess what I'm missing is that I'm gonna have people following me. Okay. So let's dunk our head in wax, and then we can come down here and uh, do the uh, do this section now. Now that we have no fear of getting cursed. Okay, this is not good. the wax so I slow walk and can't roll. There we go. And I'm sure I lost this crystal lizard up here, but I don't really care that much about that. But I do care about this. The flesh bite ring. I'm sure we don't need to read it. Kareem. Crafting is forbidden. Alright. I'm sure there's like some chunks or something over here, but... There's an undead bone shard there. And <laughs> another uh, gargoyle. And this I'm also going to skip. I'm going to try to get past these guys. And uh, these are the black hands. because I want to open up the shortcut and take them on from behind. And now we're back at the, uh, the start and I'm going to actually go back to Firelink Shrine as I wanted to do in the beginning of this episode. Because we have Logan's scroll, and that's the final scroll. And if we have enough souls to buy all the um, sorceries, then um, oh, and we can also be here at Ashes. Back again, I see. Perfect. Unfathomable. 
This is a crystal sorcery. Created by the pale dragon. Thought only to exist in legend. I am ever grateful to you. This is truly sublime. I am afraid this is a debt I cannot repay. Only, I will be sure to unravel it for you. Just a moment. Take some five seconds. Um, alright, well I guess, let's see. 18,000 for some. Let's see if we can get most of them. Fifteen thousand. It's insane. Ten thousand. Promise to stay. I should have enough of these to. Oh. Yes, I did forget something. Okay. Good. Nice. In Vinheim, I was an assassin. Who's a spook? A sorcerer only in name. A killer for hire. What a fool I was, thinking one day I would learn real sorceries. When I became undead, I was exiled from the school. But here I am, now, exploring the depths of sorcery. Because of me. All thanks to you, I might add. You're welcome. You are no ordinary man. All these sorceries, and you've mastered every one. Mm -hmm. If this were the Dragon School, you'd be... Well, overtly despised and banished from the place. <laughs> like Logan. Well, I suppose it's time I pack my bags. I would hate to see our agreement end sourly. Better left, tucked away. It's a pleasant memory. Okay. You are no better. Promise to stay. It's kind of a nice little moment with Orbeck, even though he's a little bit of a hard gentleman. Um, let's see if talking to Patches does anything with um, if we have Grey Rat's ashes. Well, look at you. I just got hold of some truly fine treasure. And for you. <laughs> Wait just a few. Okay, did he get anything new? Or is he just saying that every time we talk to him? Now just wait. Yeah, whatever. Um So yeah, an arena should be gone. Okay, we'll finish that up. Ah, oh, gracious, passing fine ash thou hast given, and awfully warm at that. Almost as if it had lived mere moments ago. Uh huh. Oh, forgive an old woman's idle prate. I'm sure an ashen one such as thee would never indulge such base contrivances. I did not kill him. <laughs> Directly. Um, and so... Okay, so she starts to have some of these uh, weapons that he had. Candlestick covered in ivory scales, once used by the scholars of the Great Archives. This served as their guiding light, as well as a tool of self-restraint. Even today, wielders of this weapon benefit from the resulting sorcery strengthening properties. Yeah, this is all the stuff he... ...sold, which is good. Plus stuff that he would have found. Okay, we read that. Buckler target. OK. 
Okay, the knights who formed the High Priestess's Guard carried great shields such as these, which were granted high magic absorption through her blessing. Okay, we have the undead. The knight stuff from him. Favor, Shiva, Morn, Dancer, Ex Exiled, Gundir, the Assassin's Armor, which we read earlier, and the Thief, and all his arrows, and all this stuff. Okay. Ashen one. So we're all good with that. We have an Undead Bone Shard. Don't forget about that. And we need to go visit Arena now. This is just like in the middle of the episode we have to do this, but I want to beat the Twin Princes and then come back and talk to everyone separately. So yeah, Arena moves to here in the Fire Keeper's room. <sighs> Sweet champion of Ash, let souls be your strength. So she can level us up now. Oh, let... Which is crazy. She became a firekeeper after all, even though Igon believed that she couldn't. Which reminds me, we have to go get Igon stuff in the Undead Settlement, but that will come. We will do that another time. Okay. Let us burn. Do we have more than one? Uh, we may, but we can't kindle it any further. Alright. So yeah, let's definitely get all these out of our inventory. Uh, maybe we'll use that stuff later, but for now... Alright, perfect. Oops. Ugh. <laughs> Alright. Let's go back to the Grand Archives. See if I can get a little help. Just in case. Otherwise, I think I'm just gonna try and uh, buff this and just try to take one. I mean, I don't know if of a good way to fight these people because they uh, they all just come at you at once, no matter what. So hopefully I can get her. Okay. She got the soul spear. I thought for a second they might not come in here. They uh, are permanently dead, which is nice, so hopefully I can do this in one stage, but... He looks like a fair knight. Okay, nice. Bad. So the golden wing crest shield, a blue knight's shield engraved with a golden wing crest. 
This shield is exceptional amongst the chanted blue shield shields. Not only does it boast high magic absorption, but also enable its wheeler to parry spells. I think we read a similar one to that. Onikiri and Ubadi Ubadachi. The hunters, known as the King's Black Hands, wielded paired weapons. These belonged to Kamui, the looked after, who looked after the prince. Kamui brought Onikiri with him to the undead settlement where he forged Ubadachi and was finally prepared to join the ranks of the royal hunters. Do we see the Onikiri in the undead settlement? I feel like maybe I'm just remembering this from whatever. Sage's Crystal Staff. Crystal Catalyst presented as a gift by the Crystal Sages to their fav favorite pupil, Crimehild. Crystal Spheres devour the will of the user, and this staff increases the potency of sorceries at the cost of increased FP consumption. And, uh, yeah, there's an interesting statue here. Could be the first scholar, potentially. We have this king again. It could be Osiris and another scholar. There's that. Um, there's that one we saw in the beginning of the game. The bearded scholar with wings. Okay. So now we are going to take a little diversion here and ignore the area that looks exactly like Boletaria. And we're going to uh, try to take on these uh, super winged knights here. Um, I <coughs> farm these guys a lot, so. Usually the best way to do it is to come through here if they actually fall. walking. Okay. to catch them on the downswing of Tight night slab for your troubles. Okay. 
and there's something up on the roof here. I don't know if there's anything here where they were standing. Well, that's where they were standing before. Hunter's ring, which seems like it would be another pillar, but it's we know it's not. Increases dexterity. Uh, the hunters serve Lothric on the fringes of in the sh and in the shadows. For generations, rulers of Lothric have relied, especially on the Black Hand hunters, to punish enemies in ways that the king's three pillars cannot. So yeah, I guess the three, the uh, Black Hands is like an unofficial. Uh, pillar of Lothric. Never really knew to notice there was like a C here. It's kind of cool. But those three. Uh, have angels, angel knights, were guarding an area high above Lothar, uh, Grand Archives, but is a cage, as we've heard about Gertrude being held in a cage. Divine pillars of light, and there's feathers everywhere. And there's feathers associated with this miracle. Miracle of Gertrude, the heavenly daughter. The queen's holy maiden, Gertrude, was visited by an angel who revealed this tale to her. Despite losing both her sight and her voice, she was determined to record the tale. Ordinary men cannot decipher her fragmentary scrawl, nor comprehend how it became the foundation of the angelic faith of Lothric. So, this is a big debate uh, point. Mainly, that, so it says that she lost her sight and she lost her voice. And we know of a voiceless deity. Um... Who is being guarded by these guys? Are you joking? <clears throat> so, um, a lot of people think that Rosaria is Gertrude. The question is why is there a, a body in the cage? If that's Gertrude to me. Um, it's certainly possible that Rosaria is Guinevere or the Queen of Lothric potentially, but again it's like it's very loose sure if it's like I don't know um oops but it is interesting that Rosaria's maggot is here oh my gosh I totally didn't even see what that was I would like to point out, by the way, that this guy who does miracles sends out things that look like the, the saint's bident. Which is the weapon of Saint Klimt, who became 
Archdeacon Clint. I think that that's, you know, important. We have a couple of chests here. We got a Divine Blessing. Again, Gertrude and Guinevere and Queen of Lothric. Highly related. So it makes sense. Um, but I'm just going to do this. So maybe we'll find more um, clues or whatnot, but for me, uh, you know, I guess I like the idea of Rosaria not being either, but that she's obviously related to Gertrude. Um, and possibly the ain't, yeah. I, I don't even want to say that, but um, maybe she was the angel, she was a god that came and gave the stuff to um, Gertrude and made her like a prophet, whatever. Alright. So this is another thing, I'm just gonna save us all a lot of time, at least in theory. In theory, I said, in theory. The king's black hand is his wide room. It's emblematic of that role. Hmm. Um, oh, really? I didn't send that down. Okay. okay. Um, because, yeah, we could sit and take all these guys out. I mean, maybe I should take them all out and then run by the knights. gotten deserter armor before. I'm sure it doesn't say anything new, but... night here. Okay. Why? These guys never attack. Okay, let's see if we can do this now. This is not like the most convenient bonfire or whatever, but it's like, I don't know, it's better than nothing. And it's the one I use. It's better than running past all those guys. But, there's a little secret here. If you push that up and come down, they did this in Bloodborne as well. Where are we at? Okay, I think we could, if we summon people I think we could we can probably do this oops and it's another titanite slab but I accidentally sent it off <laughs> I guess we could uh, we could just uh, do this we don't need to whatever 
I guess it would have been nice to check if that other... Uh, yeah, so we want to go to the dancer bonfire. Or I guess we could run from... Hmm. It's probably safer to run from the, uh... The Dragon Slayer armor, actually. Um, it's a bit of a trek, but, you know. It's safer than going by uh, all the uh, uh, enemies, so. Yeah, it just happens to be placed way over on the other side of the arena. Like, if it was placed here, it would be nice. probably going to be a long episode, because I'll, I'll do a loose, I'll, I'll kill, I'll kill Lothric here, oh, I didn't even think about the fact that I thought I should have gone down, um, I will kill Lothric and then we'll do a loose on this video, because there's a lot to do before we actually, like, So yeah, we can see the three pillars on here. High Priestess, the Knight. And the Scholar up on top. Which is cool. So we can summon Cirrus and I think, I mean, I thought we could do Orbeck. Um, but, uh, huh. Maybe it's way in a different place, but. Let's do Cirrus. Okay. Another dogged contender. Welcome, unkindled one, purloiner of cinders. Mind you, the mantle of Lord interests me none. The fire linking curse, the legacy of Lords, let it all fade into nothing. I plan to. You've done quite enough. Now have your rest. Got him. Kind of. There's another oh, sibling. Dear brother, I'm on my way. Is that Gertrude? My 
brother, unyielding sword of Lothric's prince. For that is our curse. That's crazy. She can revive him, or he. So we were fighting Lorien, and then this is Lothric. So yeah, that makes sense. So um, Lothric was wearing the um, the prayer robes that he had said he wore, and he was up there the whole time. But his brother, Lorian, who are called the Twin Princes, um, came and fought the first battle for us, and then carried Lothric on his back we knew that uh, Lothric was disabled from birth, but we don't know anything about Florian. The two princes rejected their duty to become a lord, become lords of Cinder, and settled down far, far away to watch the fire fade from a distance. A curse makes their soul nearly inseparable. Cinders of a lord left by Prince Lothric. The Lothric blood. If the lords will not return to their thrones themselves, let them return as cinders. The Lothric bloodline was obs obsessed with creating a worthy heir, and when this proved impossible, resorted to unspeakable means. Suffice it to say, the path to linking the fire is a cursed one indeed. So, yeah, um. That certainly is demonstrated in um, you know, in what we kind of do know of what is that on the ground? That's weird. I guess it's all over. Feathers. Um, we do know that like there are some things going on with the, uh, the, the, the line of, you know, the Queen of Lothric, Guinevere, and Osiris, and we know that, uh, like, there was something weird with Ocelot, maybe he was a child of dragons, you know, that was one of his ways of trying to, like, you know, get a, a worthy heir. 
We had Gertrude who, although it might have just been the fact that she um, was approached by an angel, but she obviously was like a prophet of some sort. Maybe that is related to that. Like maybe she's a prophet because of her bloodline. Uh, and we obviously have Lorien and Lothric who were cursed. Who knows if they were cursed because, you know, if they were cursed because of, you know, something that was related to a weird bloodline or uh, something to do with how they were trying to be conceived. Who knows, but it certainly it tells a story about what was going on here. Um, so, yeah, we're going to uh, get one item before we end this episode, because we're here. And then most everything else we will be taken care of in the next episode. I don't see what I want to see. I guess we'll take care of it in the next episode if I didn't get it right. Um, yeah, I think we're done. Alright, thanks so much for watching this episode, and we will kind of have the thrilling conclusion of Dark Souls 3 next episode. I mean, that's not exactly true. Uh -huh. We're going to go to the final boss. We're not going to beat the final boss. And then we have Archdragon Peak, the Arendelle, and then the uh, Ring City that we're going to play, obviously. But we're going to essentially progress to the end of the game, save the actual last boss, and so, yay. Um, there's a lot more stuff that gets filled in with the DLCs, but uh, it was a cohesive story as it was. So maybe we will finally end up with all the pieces of information that we want to know. So see you next time. Bye.